Good day, everyone. Today, we are going to be looking at what was on top of this shelf. We've done every layer so far on our shelf tour. Um, there are many other shelves, of course, to get through. But before we get to those other bookshelves, I wanted to look at what was on top of here because there was some cool stuff on top of there. I've arrayed it all on this table and we can go through the objects one by one um, in, this, in this installment of the inventory of a, uh, of a compulsive bookkeeper. Now this one's so good, I think we should do it last. This one is so cool that I think we should do it last. I think it should be the last thing we talk about. So let's set it, um, let's give it a place of, um, let's just put it to the side for now. And we'll talk about it in a moment. Um, so a habit of mine at, at the top of that shelf was to, was to keep art books there. I was keeping all of my like Chris Ware books there. And, um, t and uh, today I wanna talk about uh, the two that remained up there. They're books that kind of like didn't have spaces on any other shelves. They may end up being top shelf shelves in the future. Um, in my next library. So um, that might be like a permanent home for them, but I think it's not really the best permanent home for them because it's tough to get stuff down from up there. Anyway, um, before we get there, this was up there, my copy of the Bhagavad Gita. This was recommended to me a few years ago and I read it and I loved it and I underlined stuff in it about, um, how, about suffering and stuff. Wow, I made a note that something was reminded me of the film Badlands. Yeah, so I was making notes like that. It's just your typical Bantam classic of the Bhagavad Gita, translated by Barbara Stoller Miller. Um, is there an instrument? Okay, I thought there was something in here. I thought there was some blurb by, uh, well, whatever. Um, I thought there was some blurb by some professor that my friend had as his advisor in college, but I was, um, I was mistaken. This deserves a reread. This is one of those reads that's kind of tough. Um, it's a bit, it's a bit, you know, it makes you take a good hard look at yourself. I think I fall short, as basically everybody does, of the standards laid forth in this text. Also up there was this beautiful cabinet. There's this cabinet, and how does it, how does it work? It looks like we have a, uh, we have a door, and then we have shelves. We have four shelves. Oh, this one has a little bit of a kind of a, a the veneer is kind of coming off in there. And then, uh, oh, there's some petals in there, some, some old flower petals. And then here we have a little music box. Wow, so while that's going, I want to talk about these other cool things that were up there. We have the Book of the Thousand Nights and a Night, the Complete Burton Translation with the Complete Burton Notes, the Terminal Essay, a Complete Index, and a Thousand and One Decorations by Valenti Angelo. Valenti Angelo. The cover looks the same on the front and the back. Um, you see that the pages are kind of like stained a little bit yellow or something, or maybe they were like yellow to begin with, and they just sort of like come off in this pattern. The, the stain is gonna come off in this pattern. The press that this is out on, I love these line drawings. I mean, I'll, I'll go into those in a second. But the press is the Heritage Press, New York. Um, and the drawings are this really lovely kind of open style that leaves um, just enough to the imagination. Um, it's a really magical um, illustration style. You can see the, there, that's how it does horses. Um, that's how it does houses. Um, I've read maybe like a tale or two out of here. Um, I really liked the way they dealt with, uh, you know, captivity as a theme. Um, this is not the complete, this is not the complete Thousand Nights in a Night, of course, because this is just volumes three and four and five and six. So this is like the second two thirds, I think. Of the thousand one, of the thousand nights and a night, um, and this was a find where, like, it was it was just like remarkably cheap at um, at at uh, at half, half price books, and I was like, you know, I don't really have any of the unabridged edition of this in any translation, 
And this looks like a good enough way to do it. And it was only like $5 for the two of these. So um, yeah, I'd love to read more stories from these, especially since I want to read more um, short fiction in the future. You can see on the front there, we have this lady who's floating among all these leaves and she's in this little insignia. Um, it's like a cloth uh, spine there. Everything is bound up really nice. They're just really nice, sturdy additions. And they're kind of narrow too, which I like. The pages are like not super wide. Um, so it kind of, um, it kind of sits open nicely and um, feels like a cozy little um, treasure chest. Look at these illustrations, they're amazing. Oh my goodness. It's like you can't turn to one that doesn't make your, your heart jump. Uh, wow. The stuff on the top of this shelf is so kind of like beautiful and like art filled that it doesn't really work well with talking about it. It kind of just want to turn through it and be like, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, you know. But there you have that, volumes three, four, five, and six of this amazing edition of the book of A Thousand Nights and a Night. Maybe one day I'll find the first two volumes and complete this set. That would be quite nice, I think. But uh, before, before the, until then, I, I think this is plenty of text. Do you, do, do you not agree? Let's set these over here by the Job's Tears and the Bhagavad Gita. I really don't know if this music box is ever going to stop. Next, a dusty copy of Monograph by Chris Ware. You see the gold circles, Monograph? Monograph, Chris Ware. Published by Rizzoli, hence the R on the bottom. Same people who do the Codex Seraphiniana seen here in a stack of books that all fit on a theme. My guess is that having your, your art put together in a Rizzoli book is kind of like the holy grail of art publications for any, you know, visual artist. On the cover, we have the same stuff that you get with like the Rusty Brown cover and with the Jimmy Corrigan cover where a lot of little mini stories are encoded in the graphics and little like schematics that cover the cover. Here you have like an artist with a little drafting table and they're on this planet. And you can see that Chicago he is here because it's got Lake Michigan there. I think that's kind of nice, don't you think? And then I think this points to the artist's house out in a suburb where, um, you know, where there's more space to roam. And then I think maybe one of these other outposts represents uh, Omaha, Nebraska. Ah, it could be that this is Omaha, Nebraska, and this is uh, Austin, Texas, or uh, wherever in Texas he went to college. This book kicked off a whole period of drawing for me. That period really culminated in these two books of drawings. I really felt like I could do it. And I liked using pens with very small, uh, fine points to draw. And I drew in notebooks like these. I kind of got into these Fabriano notebooks that have the Ecoqua paper or whatever. And then that period ended, which is, uh, which is not good because it was very, very, very affirming to make a drawing of anything, even a bad one. And you would think that a Nicholson Baker fan, as adamant as myself, would have already purchased Nicholson Baker's new book on drawing and, re, uh, and kicked off a drawing phase again. But I don't think any book has the power to kick off a drawing phase as much as this one does. Now I wanna just film some selections from these drawing notebooks. I think you get the picture. Okay, now it's after lunch and I've had some green tea and <clears throat> I, it's, I'm okay to continue the video. My, head, my headache is receding. So we've teased Arsene Schrawen. We've uh, looked at this thing. We've looked at its little music box that was inside of it. We've looked at my nice two volumes out of the three. We've looked at the Bhagavad Gita. And now before we look at building stories, I wanted to talk about uh, Monograph. I first saw this book. It barely fits on screen. I first saw this book at Room of One's Own in Madison when it was at its old location. And then um, I, I knew that I wanted to buy it because it had tipped in books. As you can see on this page, we have like a big print of the art that eventually finds its way onto this little Acme Novelty Comics thing. Um, and is it's an idea for a New Yorker cover there. 
but it's a tipped in book, meaning that it's kind of like a stapled in or glued in. There's no like staple marks on the other side. So yeah, it's just like a stapled in booklet. I hope I'm getting that phrase right, tipped in. I don't, I haven't looked it up. Maybe I'm like mishearing it, like how some people hear intensive purposes for intense, intense and purposes. I mean, vice versa. Here's another one. It's a little musical composition, a ragtime composition. Uh, Chris Ware is a ragtime pianist, so. Oh. Oh, wow. Um, it's just, it doesn't, I don't think the page turns again. Wait, yes, it does. And here's another one. And there's another little one in there somewhere. But um, just seeing one of those was like, oh, I need this book. And then later I got it from a bookstore in Chicago. Uh, finally got my own copy, it was $60 um, hardcover. I wonder if it's still in print, if you can get it for that. I mean, this one's not been treated very well. Like, I mean, where are you gonna keep it? It ended up, you know, getting a lot of drinks put on it and stuff. I read this pretty assiduously, like I think once or twice. And it just, just, um, it's impossible not to get infected by the, the, um, his just, just the, the sheer invention, the visual invention and the, and the, and the love of all kind of naturally occurring images, everything that can be sketched, anything that can be diagrammed, anything that can be kind of, uh, put into diary, any way that life can be transformed into art, you know? I should probably do like a video where I go through this page by page. There is a video like that that's done by cartoonist Kayfabe. Um, I don't know if you guys do cartoonist Kayfabe, but um, um, there's this giant book, this uh, monograph. Um, I should like, I should um, reread this, you know? Maybe show it to you guys in closer detail. But it's really lovely. It has, I like the student art. Today, I'm, I'm just thinking about those pieces that are like part of Chris Ware's like thesis exhibitions at SAIC or wherever. And, um, and it just reminds me of my, my friends who are MFA painters. So yeah, so this is definitely top shelf material. And then something I got later was building stories. I think I got it from an actual like comic shop. It's in like a giant Monopoly box. It's really like just a game. It's like a, it's like a board game. And I think the notable thing is that I have my, uh, my issue one of Palookaville, my Palookaville vol uh, number one, um, stashed in there for safekeeping. This also doesn't belong in there. This also definitely doesn't belong in there. And this definitely doesn't belong in there. So there, is the, there are these things that I've just been using the box of building stories to kind of keep safe. <laughs> but these are not materials that, are, that come with the book. But I, I kind of just like the idea of using a little bit of the extra space that's in here. I like that the copyright, space, the copyright page is in there. Um, yeah, I'm very distant from a read of this. This and Monograph last looked at in 2018. That was my drawing phase. Um, I wanna look at them again. That is the refrain of the channel, again and again. I wanna look at this again, you know? Uh, I think something I'll do after filming this video is look at these four comics that were stashed in there. The Palookaville is kind of awesome. Um, there's a little bit of like where it's kind of creased on the, by the whatever, by the, by the staples. So yeah, definitely also some top shelf material. It's like $100 to buy this, this type of thing. I found this this very emotionally, very moving. I liked the fictions in it a lot, like the, the section where it's just, it's an allegory with a bumblebee. If you're curious what's in this, y'all are familiar with this, I think. This, what the heck is this? Maybe let's just look at these for a sec. Wow. It looks like it's just sort of a thing from the, from the Museum of Contemporary Art. It's really beautiful. Wow. Wow. Take her clothes off. It's a nudist colony. This is the, the personnel behind this fish police thing. I think I might have got this as drawing inspiration. Like these weird faces, the guns. Maybe the, maybe the speech bubbles. That's a cool way back into drawing. Just trace the speech bubbles, you know? You don't have to do anything fancy. Just trace this, this, um, 
this archway with the speech bubble, trace something else inside, you got yourself something cool in an archway. Yeah, um, pretty curious contents of my building stories can case. And then here it is, kind of like the toppest of the top shelf, the highest of the high, um, a rare kind of cloth bound uh, Fantagraphics uh, books, um, translation of a book by O. Shrawen called Arsene Shrawen. And it is about, I think the cartoonist, it's like a fantasy involving the, the cartoonist's father transmuted into a character. It's got lots of dream in it, lots of great um, kind of memoir style, simple, beauty, beautiful sections. Um, it is um, basically a masterpiece. It looks like no other comic book I've ever seen. It has this kind of like these blue and these red portions. Um, it is incredible to read. It's, um, I, I just really am glad to have this. Also, I haven't been able to find replacement copies online. So, um, and this is another one where it's like my last encounter with it was maybe like 2019 or something. This was found not by me, but by somebody else at uh, Myopic Books in Chicago and uh, kind of put in my collection. Um, and it's quite splendid. Here you have, you, have, you, have, you have your spine that kind of looks like the cover. You have that diamond motif thing and it continues on the back. Uh, there are some jokes on the spine. Bullshit artistry <laughs> is funny. Um, the subjects are both visceral and hilarious, says Richard McGuire, the, the author of Here. Um, new Acquaintances is a funny joke there. There's all kind of, it's kind of like a blood and platelet style design to this. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it, it, it's pretty apparent why this is a top shelf item. I don't know, like, how gettable this book is now. I don't think it's in print. Um, if you've got a copy, let me know. Um, anyway, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this overview of what was on the top shelf. Um, more shelf tours to come. Everybody happy reading.